The collaboration between Maruti Suzuki and Toyota in India have spawned a lot of vehicle, a lot of re-engineered vehicles, giving buyers an option to pick their choice. And right here is one more choice. For that matter of fact, this is the Maruti Suzuki in Victo. And this has been a little bit of a modified version of the Toyota High Cross, and we are reviewing this car today. Hello and welcome to Try Spark. This is Bharadwaj, and let me take this Maruti Suzuki Invicto out for a spin and tell you how this car is to drive, and let me talk about all the changes that have been made on this particular MPV. Starting off with the front, Maruti has gone for their design language in terms of grille. You can see the Nexa grille being present right here, along with the large Suzuki logo and two chrome bars pronouncing the front and giving it a very rich look. There is a lot of chrome around here, around the grille, and there is also a silver uh, scuff plate at the bottom of the bumper, and there are front parking sensors right here. So also a camera right here for a 360 degree function. Now, in terms of changes, the grille actually looks pretty good and makes the car look very muscular. The bonnet though has been retained from its Japanese counterpart. And the lighting also remains the same. It gets complete LED lighting at the front. Right now you can see the DRL is being on and also there is a dynamic indicator present right here below the bumper. So this is all about the front. Now moving to the side profile, you can spot a major change. This being the top end variant that the Maruti sells. This gets 17 inch wheels and not the 18 inch that you find on the Japanese counterpart. With that, um, it could have been an 18 incher. Probably you can do an aftermarket upgrade, but still looks damn good. There are no changes on the side profile though, uh, because everything else remains the same. The crease on the door, the 360 degree camera on the ORVM, even the roof and the D pillar, everything else remains the same. But let us go on the rear section where some changes have been made. So coming to the rear here, again, this gets a Nexa design language right here with the Suzuki logo right in the middle. It gets a large chrome bar connecting both the tail lamps on either side, which are new unit and not the same as the Innova High Cross. And also right here, you get Invicto badging and the hybrid badging right here, stating that this is available only as a strong hybrid variant. There is no smart hybrid or a mild hybrid variant on sale with the Maruti Suzuki Invicto. Apart from that, the bumper also has gone through certain redesign and makes it look a little more aggressive than the Innova is what I feel. And you continue to get an electronic tailgate right here. Once you open up the electronic tailgate, you get to see a lot of uh, luggage room right here, even though this is a three-seater. Innova High Cross or the Maruti Suzuki Invicto, you will never feel it is short on space. It actually, for the form, it offers a lot of space practically and you also have a little more storage down below as well when you lift the tray right here so if you want to put some numbers into perspective as is it offers 250 liters of boot space but if you go ahead and recline both the seats like this which you can do because it's a 50 50 split seat you can extend the luggage space up to 600 liters so this is all about the boot space and the exteriors of the Maruti Suzuki Invicto. Now it's time to go inside and tell you what this car has in store on the inside. Let's go. So now it's time to enter the Maruti Invicto and let me start with the rear seat. Uh, so once we open this wide rear door, which also has a sun shade, that you can deploy and get some more comfort. The seat here is not tumbled. It only just moves forward. So with the lever right here, you have to move it. And in same action, you can move the seat front. So this opens up space for you to climb inside the third row. And I'm just going to do that. So one foot right here and hop myself in. And I can now sit comfortably. Uh, let me pull the seat back right here which I can do and let me also recline. So now I'm sitting comfortably in the third row and you can see that the seat that is ahead of me, that's the middle row seat, uh, is comfortably reclined and it also has good amount of leg space on the front as well. And I am sitting comfortably here with good amount of leg room. Uh, uh, other amenities that 
uh, you know, present here in the third seat is this seat can be reclined. All three headrests can be adjusted as per you know convenience. But three people sitting here is gonna be a little bit of squeeze, especially if you are like dimension challenge like me. And you can also find a cup holder right here, and also there is a 12 volt socket for you to uh, you know charge your devices. And also there is a roof mounted AC vent right here uh, for some uh, you know comfortable uh, traveling right here. So all in all, third row is very comfortable, and you get a little bit of amenities to you know make your longer journeys better as well. So with a captain chair like this, you really do not have to move the seat to move forward to the second row. All you can do is go in between and move on to these uh, captain chairs that is present right here, which is what I'm gonna do just now. And let me come here brilliant bronze detailing right here uh, i really like it and also let me deploy the sun shades so that i can be a little bit of a cool person right here and sitting here i have enormous amount of legroom right here and if i'm carrying a car there is a, a hook right here as well for me to help uh, store some cars or bag and there is a large panoramic sunroof that will bring in a lot of light into the cabin and also there are individual AC controls for the rear passengers making it the dual zone uh, climate control in this car and if you are sitting in the third row you will have to actually ask the passenger sitting in the middle to control the temperature but that's fine uh, that's just nitpicking and you also get two type C sockets uh, right there uh, one of them if it would have been a type A it would have been great uh, you also get seat back pockets and a comfortable uh, seat to sit in uh, very uh, comfortable seats uh, for longer journeys. I especially love this captain seat, but you know, from the other brand, what this car is based on, that gets Ottoman seats for uh, you know enhanced comfort and calf muzzle comfort, uh, which is a miss on this particular car. But in the captain chair configuration, what you additionally get is a cup holder right here, which you can deploy and uh, add some cups right here, and you can keep your phone and stuff also right here. Um, probably a wireless charger can also be added. Uh, as an accessory so if you want to pass through uh, to the third row or from the third row you can drop this tray by pulling on the tab, and uh, that's about it so that's about the middle row and you also get individual AC vents right here uh, for added comfort and also you have lighting as well uh, if you're reading or something so that's about the uh, you know middle row let me now go to the front of the seat and tell you what are the features and all the other bits of this Maruti Suzuki Invicto let's go. So now we are sitting on the front seat, actually the car is on, otherwise the seat would have presented itself, that function is present on this car. And once I sit inside, I am sitting inside a very premium cabin, that's because uh, the bronze highlights that you see on the door pocket and also around the AC vent, on the center console and also around the cup holders, absolutely makes it look very premium and plush and all the soft touch materials that are present on the dashboard enhances the quality of the cabin with that uh, it is also feature loaded uh, i will start with the seat you have two memory functions that you can set and you get a eight-way power adjustable seat for the driver itself there's no uh, power adjustable seats for the passenger or the co-driver uh, but both seats come ventilated with three levels of ventilation that you can operate right here so with that, uh, I will start with other features that are present right here. Let me now talk about the 10 inch floating infotainment system that uh, you know features Android Auto, Apple CarPlay wireless. And there is also a seven inch uh, digital instrument cluster with uh, analog dials on either side. And the present, the center screen that is present right here gives you a lot of data, uh, real time data, um, including the speed and other stuff that you can cycle around, including the mileage that you can see here, trip meters, everything. Apart from that, let me come to the center console right here. You get climate control and a ton of buttons and a center console mounted gear lever, uh, which will free up space in, this, uh, in the middle of the center console as well. You get parking brake, you get a 360 degree camera view, which, which will show you a lot of angles for you to park easily. And with that, you have electronic parking brake, you have auto function, drive modes. Uh, you can force the car to drive in the EV mode with this button. And there's also a traction control button right here. So this is the ECVT. I'll talk about how the gearbox performs when I'm driving the car. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are a few misses again here. Um, one of them is actually the ADAS. And with that, you also miss a wireless charger that is 
not a factory fitted uh, it is given as an accessory and you get two usb ports right here and a cup holder and a very good center console as well very deep uh, but it's not cooled though only cooled uh, storage that you get is the box that is present right here and also a 12 volt socket very interesting choice of placement good though because you have a small cubby hole right here to support that 12 volt socket so this car gets a eight speaker audio system but it is not the same nine speaker jbl audio unit that is present on its uh, other japanese counterpart so this is all about uh, the interiors and again i would like to emphasize the panoramic sunroof that is present right here which will let in a lot of light into the cabin especially in a day like this where it is raining it will give you a joy of driving the car in the rain so finally i'm going to be driving this car and let me take this car out for a spin and tell you how this car drives because this is apparently only available in a strong hybrid powertrain let's go so now we are behind the wheel of the maruti suzuki invecto and i would like to tell you that nothing has been changed under the hood it is the same as the you know uh, high cross but the japanese counterpart is available in two engine options however the invicto is only available with the strong hybrid that is present right here now this is a 2 liter petrol engine along with a electric motor which will help you you know drive uh, very comfortably and also with without any hassle right now if you can see this car is being driven only by electric mode once the electric charge gets over the engine comes alive and it will start to charge the battery you have different modes you have power mode you have normal mode and you have also eco mode depending on the mode the engine will either drive the wheels directly or it will start charging the ev battery and keep it running through the electric mode especially when you are slow speeds that's what happens and that is how you can get a fantastic mileage of around 20 kmpl in real world condition although toyota claims it can do around 23 kmpl if you are little careful and uh, trotting on the uh, accelerator pedal very carefully you can do even more than that as well so putting some numbers to perspective uh, for this engine it delivers 183 ps of power and 188 newton meters of torque this is combined with the engine and also the motor uh so with this you have adequate performance uh there is no lack of performance from this engine even though this is a very large mpv slash suv uh the hybrid engine does deliver a lot of performance whenever you need it because the engine will come alive and start to uh drive the wheels whenever especially if you are in the power mode now if you are wondering where to change the drive modes or even you know forcefully drive this uh in the electric mode there are two buttons right here uh next to the gear lever so if you press on that you can cycle between the different modes and also there is a ev mode as well where if you press it it will forcefully run on electric until the charge runs out where the engine will again come alive and start to charge the battery with that let me move on to the gearbox now this gets a ecvt you would have seen this in a lot of toyota cars so basically it is a cvt gearbox with a little bit of more electronics on it with that you also get paddle shifters right here if you are looking to manually shift between gears or fiddle around with the reject system of this car you can use the paddle shifters behind the wheel to do so so this paddle shifters will also help you in uh, getting some engine braking and also it will help you in uh, regeneration system as well now with that uh, let me talk about the driving dynamics of this car again there's no change at all it drives very comfortably you get to choose from a different driving position because of the tilt and telescopic steering wheel and the eight way power adjustable driver seat uh, the seats are very comfortable and the nvh levels are excellent for this car because whenever it's you know on the ev mode you barely hear any noise from coming out of the engine or even from your uh, exterior noises that would be running around your car so in that sense it will give you that serene experience and paired with the sunroof like this it is a absolute treat to drive this car so in terms of suspension setup itself uh, it has been uh, set up uh, tuned a little bit on the uh, neutral side i would say it is not firm or it is not even uh, soft with a full load definitely you would get a very plus ride quality uh, while you are at it driving alone probably you might find the car to be a little bit bouncy over rough terrain but that is just net picking finally coming to the safety aspect of it uh, as i mentioned earlier there is no adas on this however you do have a 360 degree camera and you get six airbags as well uh, it is a safe place 
to be in and although there are no crash test safety rating yet for this car we can definitely uh, feel the car to be well built and it will protect you in case of that unfortunate incident so that was our take on the interesting maruti suzuki invicto so yes this car misses out on couple of features like adas and wireless charging and the 18 inch wheels but I believe Maruti has taken this decision to keep this flagship model of theirs cost effective and can offer a lot more in terms of cost and increasing the value for money factor of the Invicto. As far as the pricing is concerned, Invicto is available in three variants. That's the Zeta Plus seven seater variant, Zeta Plus eight seater variant, and the Alpha Plus seven seater variant that you see. Right. Yeah, the pricing ranges between 24.8 lakh to 28.42 lakh ex showroom. On that note, I would like to hear what are your thoughts from this review. Would you choose the Maruti Suzuki Invicto or go on to its Japanese counterpart with more features and more safety on offer? Let us know in the comments below. Also like and share this video and do subscribe to Drive Spark if you haven't done it already. This is Bharatwaj and that is the Maruti Suzuki Invicto and I shall see you in the next one.